My name is Trevor Grant. Uh, welcome to the Haas booth at PMTS. I'll show you a little bit about the uh, Robot Package 1 on a VF2 SS. So um, the way that we program this, uh, there's some uh, simple templates that are integrated into the control. All of the, all of the uh, programming and software is all integrated into the Haas control that controls and programs this Haas robot. Um, we have a series of questions that we need to answer. Uh, up here on the screen, we have uh, basically some simple, simple units that we need to fill out. So we de uh, determine what kind of sequence type that we're using. Uh, this demo that we're using is a, uh, it's a simple template. There's also an option for a custom template that may allow you to do some more complex movements, have a little bit more control over the entire system if, if needed. Um, the simple template from what I've found uh, works in 90, 99% of the case, cases, but there may be a, a use for the uh, custom template. Um, so raw stock pickup method, we are using the standard table grid. As you can see here, um, we've just had a laser cut template you know, for the, the size stock that we're using. Um, you know, it's real simple, everything's cut about 50 thou over, drop it in there, can't really, go, can't really mess it up. Um, we have a uh, finished part drop-off method that we need to select. We are dropping on a single table. You also have the ability, if you click in, you have the ability to do a single point or a dual table. So imagine a, like almost a pallet changer that you could, you could drop parts off on. Um, we're using this, the standard signal, single table. Uh, number of stacked parts. Um, you have the ability to stack up to three parts. Uh, in this demo, we're only stack, we're not stacking any, we just have one high. We have to determine how many rows we have. So in this case, we have two rows here. Number of columns. Columns are across this way. We have six on the template you see here. Distance between rows. So center line to center line, what's my distance? We have to determine that, that's five inches. Distance between columns is 4.05. So that's, that's the distance vertically. Um, you have the ability to do a part flip on the Haas robot packages. Uh, I currently have that disabled because we're machining the part in one operation. Uh, raw stock mass, 1.2 pounds. And finished part is 0.2 pounds. So that's everything that we need to fill out for the first tab. Uh, next we move over to the load part tab. We can set a base robot speed. We're, moving the, we're uh, currently feeding this robot at seven inches a second. The initial pickup location, so that's set by, by hand jogging the, the actual robot gripper. It jogs it over to the first location, so this is location number one. We jog that in over and we clamp, unclamp, and we can fine tune that in until we find the exact location of that, that first, first uh, spot, and then we set that. The uh, move to above table location, we just jog straight up in Z, we set that point. That's a safety point above my parts. Especially if I have stacked parts, I want to make sure I come up high enough and have a safe plane. Uh, next thing we have is a ready motion file. Um, that ready motion is from our safe location over in front of the door. So, so every time it picks up a piece of raw stock, that's the motion that it would make over in front of our door. It's actually sitting in the ready location currently. I need to set a uh, internal axis location for the load. So that's my X, Y, Z, um, what, tool number I what tool number I want in the spindle, maybe I want to clear the spindle like I'm doing here, as well as a A or B or C axis, you know, depending on what you have set up. Uh, raw stark stock work holding, we are using uh, the custom pneumatic vise, so I have a uh, shunk uh, vise on my setup here. We're just using a um, clamp, unclamp signal with airlines. Raw stock lo load motion, that's another motion file. That's the uh, motion that it makes from the ready location in front of the doors into the machine and actually physically loading that part into the vise. So those are set just by jogging, setting location, jogging, setting location. So you're just setting points that that robot is passing through on the way to the finished uh, destination. Okay, so that's everything we need to do for the load part. We'll move over to the uh, unload part. Okay, so same thing, finished part work holding, that's still that custom pneumatic vise we're using. The finished part pickup motion, so 
That is the motion it's going to take to unload that finished part. So same thing, it's a, it's a series of movements. And then we have a gripper swap. So after it unloads that finished part, it's going to swap to a, a location that it can load that, that new stock. That's only something that you're going to use when you have the dual gripper like you see here. All right, um, you can do an air blast sequence. I'm not. Um, we're using a dovetail, so we're actually just swiping across to clean, make sure the dovetail's clean. Uh, load after swap motion. So that's the, the load sequence that it takes to load that next part after a finished part's been machined. And then an unload part motion. So that's, that's the, uh, basically what it's doing to get that part back out of the machine. Then I set a drop off location. So that's still that same number one location. Come over maybe 100 thou above the table, and let go of it, let's set it down. Okay, so that is, that's everything that you need to do to set this robot up on this machine. Um, you can run up here and run this job so that we can show you how it works.